G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of how we converted a sunken fishing trawler into a carbon neutral exploration boat. Today, we're finishing off our little dinghy. We're gonna be putting some closed cell foam inside for flotation, we're gonna be throwing it in the water and doing some sea trials. So today on our dinghy build, we're gonna start pressure testing these tanks. Now, we've got some big gaping holes in them, so we can't fill them with air pressure because I can't block off the big gaping holes. So, I have a plan, and it involves stacking it onto my winch, hoisting it up high and filling it with water. I'm thinking having it up like this, I'll be able to fill it up to this level, sort of there. I don't know, it's probably going to give me one or two psi, it's not a lot, but it'll at least um, put some pressure inside those tanks and hopefully get them to leak if they're going to show up anything. Some of the welds are okay, some of them are a bit crap. <laughs> you see they're a bit cold around here, so I'm not really that stressed. I'm going to be grinding a few of these, I know I'm going to be fixing them. Um, this was my learning boat, so yeah. Should be fine. At the moment I'm trying to just test the weld between the tank and the hull. So, I have a look around the back, and I'm only testing a very small bit because I can only do little bits at a time when I'm doing this, but while we got it up like this, we'll test the front. So I've done a few marks where I can see some leaks coming through. You can sort of see them just sort of down in here, so I'll cut that lot out, cut it, hack that weld out with the skill saw. You can sort of see here, we've just got a lack of fusion between those two welds. It's clearly why I've started one and stopped the other and done a crap join. So we just need to hack that out and we'll get some get some more metal stuck into that. So while that's filling up, let's go and see if we can actually see anything. So on the underside, <laughs> oh, we've got a cracker leak happening there. My idea about cranking in some water to get some PSI it's working really well, showing up these really obviously, so what do we got on this side? Anything obvious? Oh, this is actually better than I thought. There's a couple of little leaks over here. God, some of those welds are a bit horrid. Oh, there's some good, oh yeah, there's pissing out there. Yeah, alright. week we've been basically putting in carpet so this is this one's probably the worst of the lot it's a wee bit lumpy just at this end you can sort of see but um I'll show you through up the front so it's, it goes right through the boat and we put heaps and heaps of yeah I know Scott um, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's been the last week's worth of work I suppose yeah so a busy month coming up yeah I'm um, getting ready for um getting ready for you getting three weeks off over Christmas. We're, we're hoping to do things like the keel has to be uh, welded up and there needs to be oil in the keel. There's uh, like a concrete, it's full of concrete, it's a big concrete slab. Yeah. Um, so we've got to get oil in there. So we've organised that already. It's been kind of like a really organising month. It's been like um, the doublers. Yeah. Uh, have you talked about no, the doublers? I haven't yet, no. Yeah, they're, they're being um, curved as we speak, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we bought the. So, bought sorry, the... Just, just in case you're wondering. So a doubler is basically a, <laughs> a massive piece of steel that gets welded to the side of the hull if you want to do add something to that hull. So if you want to add like a lifting tag or something like that, a doubler is basically a bit of steel that sits like a pad underneath it to give it more strength. And this weekend, yeah, we're hoping to have that dinghy ready. It should be hopefully in the water next week. Hopefully. Yeah, um, but... Mish's birthday is on Wednesday, so um, we're taking him to the beach and giving him a good time on, on Wednesday. How old is he? Six years? Six years, yeah. yeah. Um, we're doing a Brisbane trip, Dave's got to get some dental work um, 
just a little bit of dental work. Scott Jackson has sent the NAS computer we needed yeah. for editing because we had one computer and if it stopped we were you know, out of luck basically. Yeah. Um, and we found one and we got it. We, it was, we put it on an auction, it was an auction eh? Yeah, yeah, we put an yeah. auction on. And put, we won it really cheap. Put a stupid perfect, price in so and got it. It was yeah. bloody amazing. Yeah, so yeah. thanks to you guys, thanks to Patreon, yeah. we're able to pick it up really, really yeah. cheap. Um, so we're we're kind of, once the NAS gets here, we're kind of set, which is a new experience for us. Pretty awesome. Um, and Every, com comfort feet with um, the yeah, carpet. Because everything for us yeah. on the boat is normally run on an absolute shoestring. Yeah, yeah. It's all about like dump and run, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like everything we possibly can gets put into the boat, you know. And, and like worst case scenario, if Jess is, you know, really fast computer goes berserk and crashes, then we've, we're still able to do an episode, so. Now there is one drama happening on board at the moment. Um, is David and I have an argument about the holding tank. Put through the door. Estimated delivery to the NAS is 7th November. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Thanks, God. Why? Okay. Don't use alloys. Why? Yeah, why? Hang on, why? hang on, hang on. Why? Why? No, no. Just, so in order to be able to get these pads to go through, I've basically created, essentially you can see the battery terminal there bolted. I'm using a bolt. I was going to use a threaded rod, but I reckon I can get away with a bolt. I've got a nut nipped up pretty damn tight. Um, worst case scenario, it doesn't work. I can always get this off by vice grips on the end, undo that, and then spin it off cut this off etc put the threaded rod in later but um, I don't see that we'll have any issue we're never, never going to be taking this piece apart however this is going to be the inside of the tube and I need to make sure it's waterproof so I have a trick I want to show you guys these are my positive and negative they're both basically identical but what we need to do is make sure that this side is completely sealed against water so this is um, a military spec heat shrink so it basically has a it's a three to one shrink ratio so if it's say a I don't know, one, let's say it's a three inch pipe, you can shrink it down to a one inch heat shrink if that makes sense, three to one. Um, it's also resin infused, so if you have a look very, very closely, you can sort of see right up in here, there's like a little band of clear glue. It's a resin that eas oozes out when you know you've got it at the right temperature. It doesn't heat very well with just um, like low temp, you've got to have a very hot heat gun or a flame. Um, it's Now, the final trick is liquid electrical tape. I don't know if you've ever seen or used this stuff before, but it is awesome. So it's the same, literally the same goo that they use to make electrical tape. This is going to seal up my connections fully watertight. So while I'm waiting for the electrical, um, liquid electrical tape to dry, I'm going to start cleaning up these transom tube ends. So I've marked around what I want to do is cut this so that it fits inside the tube and then I'll run a weld all the way around um, on the back end of it. So flapper it out to this line and then we'll go start sticking it inside the tube. Pretty close. And with that, I can basically weld all the way around that edge without really coming into any drama like I'll obviously straighten it up it's not sitting in there perfect at the moment but it gives me heaps of ability to weld in there and then I'll clean up that edge once I've finished give it a flapper up just to make it neat and lovely bloody lovely that'll do Now, because the wind has decided to come right up, um, it's time to stop welding. And um, we'll get stuck into putting these cables in and see if we can get all of our conduit lined up as well. So these are my cables I made just a few seconds ago. So they're still, they're, tack they're touch dry. I can, you know, leave a fingerprint in it if I do that. So um, they're dry enough that I can put them in, but they'll dry, they take 24 hours to dry, so they'll dry in the boat. So we can't have cables just flopping around inside these tubes, so we need to put some conduit around them. So I have a trick to slide conduit onto these cables and keep them protected for the life of the boat. So, slide that guy on. All right, here it goes, out both ends. So, this conduit, we want it to go right up as far up as close as we can to this, so I'm just gonna cut this off on an angle. Right. Yeah, that's pretty good. That'll do. Right. Now, try and seal up that conduit from 
air, water, moisture, all that sort of stuff. So we are going to fill it with a bit of uh, a bit of goo. Get that into position and we'll tape it there and that's going to be our mount. Clean that up with a craft knife when I'm finished and we'll do a nice rim around there. So while I wait for the um, circuit to dry on those uh, battery terminals, the wind's come up a bit so it's a bit too high to be able to weld out in the open where the back of the, the boat's sitting so I'll set myself up in my little metal bench here and we'll get these battery boxes welded up. These are the boxes that we're going to do so we'll weld them, they're tacked together at the moment but we'll weld them inside and then out. Um, these are going to be pressure rated so if I can do a double continuous weld around all the joins it just makes life a hell of a lot easier when it comes to pressure testing time. For those that aren't aware what a double continuous weld is, I'll show you. It makes life really simple when you're actually having to make sure you've got a waterproof joint. When you want to weld something up watertight, you run a weld all the way down all of the edges that need a seal. So in this case there's three edges along this area of the box and then spin it around. Same deal on that side there. So if I was to do one weld on this side, all the way around, that would be a single continuous weld. If I then do a weld on the outside over here, it's a double continuous weld. So the beauty of doing a double continuous weld, let's say I've got a pinhole here on my inside weld, there's a very, very low chance that I'm gonna get a pinhole on the outside weld in the same spot. I might have a pinhole here and a pinhole there, but either way it won't leak because it physically can't get through two welds in the same spot. Right, we'll give this uh, battery box a bit of a clean up with the acid and um, see what it actually turned out like. Now that we've got the back end of the boat welded up and flap it up so it's nice and smooth, we've got the electrical um, isolation pads in, the cabling's all done, um, we've got the, uh, what do you call it, the liquid electrical tape on. All of this allows us to seal this up and start pressure testing the back end of the boat. But why go to all this trouble, you know? Why not just buy a dinghy? Why not just get something that's already off the shelf, made, whatever? We can't. Well, we can, but we don't have the money to do that. We're community funded. Why go to the trouble of building a dinghy that's as complex as this? Well, we're taking this boat to Antarctica. Everything has to be robust. The dinghy has to be a bloody strong little thing. This thing is built like a tank. It's only two millimeters thick, but man, it's strong in terms of how rigid these tubes are and how strong this dinghy's gonna be. And this is just the backup dinghy. The next dinghy that we're gonna build is our jet tender. This is gonna be something built like an absolute bomb shelter. We need to do this because we want a successful and survivable mission when we go down to Antarctica. If you're interested in going with us, get hold of us. Check out our website, brewpeg.com. Pressure testing. The plan's pretty simple. We're just gonna haul this thing up so it's vertical so we can test the back end of the tubes. 
So there's a couple of areas that we need to look at to make sure that we've got no leaks. I'll show you what we're focusing on. So first off, the obvious stuff. We need to make sure that the weld's right the way around these, the back of these tubes here is good. There's going to be some pinholes, I know that, but it's an incredibly easy part to access, so it's really not a big deal to fix those. So that's the good bit. Next up, we've got to test that little gadget there and this one here. Now these are our positive and negative terminals for the uh, outboard and also for our charging. So we're going to have a plastic cap over top of these when we're finished, but for now um, we're just leaving them as bare just so that we can do all the work we need to do. Then we need to know that the weld, where is it? That weld all the way along the bottom is basically the join of the tube as well as the join to the hull. So we have to make sure that that's in decent nick on both sides. So we're able to pressure test up to the back end of these battery cutouts. Um, there's nothing really between, so we've pressure tested from the front end of the cutout when we did these, the front end up here, and now we'll be basically just pressure testing up the back end of these tubes here. Once we've got the boxes welded in, then we'll be able to do a bit of an air test and just make sure that we're okay with, um, yeah, with, with the welds for the battery boxes themselves. We've got this thing quite high off the ground, um, mainly for access. So um, one of the reasons why when I fill it with water I want to be able to get in there and mark it and then um, grind it out and weld it later on. It's just so much easier if it's a bit higher off the ground. Radio, time to chuck some water in this thing. <laughs> that didn't take long. I think we've got a hole. Okay, so that got a bit scary. Bloody near capsized the thing over on one side. I need to fill these tubes up, tubes up really quite evenly. Um, I thought I could put like 20 litres in one, 20 litres in the other. Turns out that's not the case. Straight away, a bit of a doozy right there. Still looks pretty good. Right the way up there, I'm pretty happy with that. Don't know how far the water goes, probably up about here somewhere. I did see a few, so we got, so you see that, that's sort of running down there. I think it's just coming out of this bit just up in here. I think we'll go after the obvious ones that we can see, um, get those fixed up, and then do another lot of pressure testing. So um, probably take, you know, two or three goes to make sure that this is spot on. You might wonder how we drain this once we've gone and filled the tanks up with a six mil hole. It's only a little hole, but there's a reason we've only got a six mil hole because the six mil hole fits the center drill that's gonna work in our bungs. So these are going in each of the tubes. While the dinghy over the back takes a day to empty, um, I'm gonna tell you about what we're doing inside the tubes. So we've got internal cabling that needs to be run for our electric engine. So that's what you saw me putting in earlier. We've also got the need to stop the sides from crushing in. So if we hit something pretty hard on the sides, it's the weakest part of the boat and they potentially can crush in. They're pretty damn stiff, so it's gonna take a fair amount to get that to happen. But if that happens, we need something inside the tubes to make sure that it's stiff enough to be able to handle that. And finally, we wanna make this boat bulletproof. Essentially for us, that means unsinkable. So if for whatever reason we hit something pretty damn hard, we open up the middle of the boat, the tubes are going to provide flotation. If we hit something hard and it's out to the side, the tubes potentially can fill up with water. So we're going to be using a flotation foam inside the tubes. Now, I want to make this boat as light as I possibly can. And the reason I'm using this foam is because it is quite a light foam. So, uh, what is it? Uh, it's about 50, 50 litres of foam is about a kg. So, um, that's going to be probably, I don't know, I don't know how much volume is in, in, inside those tanks, probably a good 250 litres, something like that, I guess. Given that the tanks theoretically will have no water in them at any stage, um, they're, they're fully sealed tanks, they're going to be aluminium welded, so there shouldn't be any water getting into them unless we do something wrong. The foam theoretically will never have water on it, apart from internal condensation, but I'm not too worried about that. It can absorb that and it's not going to add too much weight, it's going to be pretty irrelevant. So, um, and because we're not opening the tanks up all the time, it's not going to get new con new atmosphere in to get more condensation. And the reason why we use pour and foam rather than something like say bottles or ping pong balls or anything like that, which work fine, you can you can do that if you like, but they move and they make noise inside the tubes and eventually they'll start perishing against each other when you start having lots of movement over years and years. 
So I want the foam so that it's a stiff medium inside there. It's also going to hold the conduit for all of our electrical cables nice and, nice and tight over the lifetime of those cables. Time to start welding. Another day, people often ask how we actually pay for Brewpeg and how we afford to do this. Um, we're not fully Patreon funded or anything like that. We'd love to be, so we could work full time, but I actually work a nine to five job. So um, it's first thing in the morning on a Wednesday, I think, Thursday, something like that. Um, so I try and bust out an hour or two of work before I start work every morning. Got to drill a hole for this bung. Little trick some of you might have seen me use before. When I'm doing a hole saw, Rather than having the 6mm drill in the middle, I like to put a um, just a piece of sh uh, shiny, clear stainless rod. Uh, the reason I do that is because there's nothing to bite, so it can be drilling away and, and the, you know, the cutting edges of a drill can sometimes bite, throw it off sideways, break the drill and then you've got to you know, go and get another expensive bloody hole saw specific 6mm drill. By doing this, it's just literally a piece of, I don't know, 30 cent metal, something like that, and it doesn't bite and it makes the hole saws last a lot longer. Some of the welds are a little bit, how's your father? You can sort of see around here they're just bulbous crap welds, they're not fused into the metal so I'm actually just going to cut pretty much all of that off and actually do a nice decent hot weld, take my time. I think when I was doing these there was just a bucket load of wind and it just made a crap job of it. Uh, it's pretty much the same in both corners so we'll get that belted out, fill that back up. A couple of minor leaks that we found when we filled this with the water, um, nothing too dramatic so I'm just going to, these weren't leaks but I'm going to fill these up. There's a couple of leaks there. Overall not too bad. We'll get that filled up and then um, we should be good. So when I opened up some of these cracks, I'm gonna come right down and show you. Zoom right in. Some of them were a lot bigger than I first thought. So I've cut them back a long way to where the crack or whatever you wanna call it stops and then I'm going to fill that up and build it back up with weld. So I've kind of been pretty aggressive with some of my cuts. Where are we? This one there. That was only a pinhole, but I hacked the crap out of it to make sure it's good. Same in these corners here, just really hacked it out so I can fill it up with a nice, decent weld. And over here as well, there was a few cracks in this one here, so again, hacked it out. This was an absolute ratchet weld. It was way too cold for what it was, so um, yeah. Still pretty happy with where we're going to end up. I think um, we'll end up with a pretty watertight boat. So pressure testing part three. Got it stacked up on the A-frame again. I've got two of them this time so it's a bit more solid. You can see where we had those leaks last time. We've belted them up. I haven't flapped them down. I need to actually do that. But yeah, we've basically filled them up pretty solidly. So, and then underneath, you can kind of see where we had pinhole leaks and stuff. I've actually gone back a long way and, and welded them up. I've put bungs down the bottom there so that we can drain these out easy. Same sort of deal over this side. Plenty of um, weld where it was having pinholes. If I found a pinhole and there was like a hairline crack either side once I opened it up, you can see on this top one I just kept going back until, I, until the, the, the hairline crack stopped and then I filled it up with a pretty hot weld to try and get as much penetration as I can. So we'll start filling all of this up and um, yeah, see if we can get rid of these leaks. It's, it's been really windy today. Um, I don't know if you can hear it in the mic, but it's probably been blowing good solid 25 with gusts of maybe 30. Um, Anyway, as a result, I put the dinghy down. I stacked it up this morning so that I could um, start doing the pressure testing, but it got way too windy and started getting blown around like crazy. So anyway, I uh, dropped it back down onto the ground and I'm gonna do some of the grinding. I can't do the pressure testing because it's too windy. Show 
show you something. It's a pretty awesome little tool that Malcolm told me about. I want to set the scene. You've just built your aluminium dinghy. You're in a windswept and interesting location. You're trying to flap her off your welds because it's obvious that you're learning to weld with alloy and you don't really want to have that showing off too many welders as you go through your travels. Cleaning up these welds proves to be a problem with standard flap oils. Bring in this guy. This is awesome, look at that. It's a flap wheel that goes all the way around the edge. That's just so kick ass, isn't it? So, these are 40 grit, they're pretty aggressive. Um, I would have liked to have get maybe 60 or 80 grit. However, we're gonna give these a shot. And what the plan is, is go through and clean up the wells with these, dig out the bulk of it, what we don't want. This is a cosmetic thing, it's not taking strength or anything out of the welds, we've still got lots of material left. And then we're gonna clean the surface up just so it's a nice, even, lovely surface before we start our acid wash. This is sort of what we're left with before we do any sort of welding or, oh, sorry, any sort of, um, you know, hardcore flappering or anything. It's pretty bulbous welds. They're big and they're ugly, but uh, as I didn't really know how to do too much alloy welding when I first started this, we just chucked heaps and heaps of metal in there. So now we're gonna go through and just clean up the surface with our flapper. Another dawn cracker. <laughs> So the wind's pretty low at the moment, so I'm going to get stuck straight into the welding of all these areas that we cleaned up. They've been buffed, they're ready to go, so let's get stuck into it and do some welding. While Trevor's busy flattering up some of the alloy that we've just welded, I made these little battery um, holder brackets. So this is going to be mounted inside the battery box you'll see shortly. This is what takes so long when you build these tanks and things like that is um, pressure testing because it never just works you always end up with like a dozen leaks well I do anyway I'm not a skilled welder so you know whatever lots of time we'll pressure test this up and we'll get it right So we think we figured out what's going on. Um, Trev phoned a friend and Rob told us how to solve this problem. Basically we're getting oxide inside our weld is one of the, the theories that we have at the moment. We think basically the welds aren't clean enough when we're starting to obviously clean it out, dig it out, etc. And then we're the, the, letting the oxide form and then welding over top and it's giving us all sorts of grief. What we're going to do, we're going to dig out the welds as we normally do and then I've got some, um, I think it's called alley shine, something like that. It's basically an acid that allows you to clean out any of the oxide and it's, um, you can weld through it as well apparently according to the guys at Box. So um, yeah, we'll get stuck in, we'll clean the welds out, uh, clean the uh, areas out that we need to weld. We'll put some of this acid in and then we'll weld straight away and see if that solves it. So this is our acid that we use, it's basically, it's called Alley Stain Shield or Alley Shield or something like that, Alley Clean. It's essentially a, um, like sulfuric acid and basically by putting this on it's ripping off the oxides and the oxides are partly what's causing the issue we think. So yeah, we'll get in there, we'll clean this off and then we'll weld it straight away and see if it makes a difference. So what was going on, we basically didn't have our welds clean enough, we had oxide um, in the welds and it was just giving us all sorts of grief. We did one real serious clean up of everything and then welded straight away and uh, pretty much solved the whole lot. Um, we've got three pinholes left, um, but they are a piece of cake to deal with and they're not in hard to get places, everything else has been sealed up. So we'll get that side finished, we'll finish the other side and then we'll start doing the front end. 
we figured out the, the rear tank on the right hand side now, we're pretty confident that that's not going to leak anymore. Um, we were exactly the same deal as the other side, we were getting a little bit of rubbish in between the two flaps once we got in there with an air compressor and blew it out, cleaned it right out with acid etc. Um, welds were starting to go beautiful, we, was, we were getting a lot of porosity and things before that as garbage gets into the weld. Um, cleaned it right up with our air compressor and acid and it was, it was um, yeah, really happy with that. So, uh, yeah, it's the end of the day, we're both starting to get brain dead, so we'll, we'll knock off then, um, get back into it first thing, and hopefully we'll get this front end of the boat done so that we can get the flotation put in. What we're going to do is thread something around the bow of the boat, because we need to pull through a cable. Um, so we'll do that, and we'll start getting these battery boxes in. We're going to start pressure testing it using air rather than water. Right in. Trip just brought up a really good point. So we were holding off and putting these battery boxes in until we had the foam and the flotation and everything inside the boxes. Um, to do that, we had to get the hulls pressure tested, or the tube, sorry, pressure tested. Um, we're gonna change our tack. So we're gonna put these battery boxes in and pressure test using air. So we're gonna be using 100% expanding foam. Um, with the battery boxes in, we've still got a fair few holes that we can access the inside of the tubes from, so we're going to be able to stick it up on its end and get it through the bungs in the back. We'll also, once it's up on its end with the nose down, bum up, we'll be able to um, stick it through some holes that are in the back of the battery boxes for the cables, put the nozzle through and squirt forward and get all the front end of the boat. Um, and then, yeah, once that's set, we'll, um, uh, we'll stick it in through the bungs on the back of each tube. So either way, we're going to have a uh, 142, 140. 26 litres of expandable foam in there, so that's going to be plenty of flotation. We don't need to fully fill these tubes, we just need enough so that um, if we completely waterlog, it's going to be, you know, have enough uh, flotation in there to keep everything afloat. These little aluminium things that we made earlier on, um, what I need to do is basically mount one up the top like that and one down the bottom, or is it down there like that, sort of thing like that. And essentially what that allows is a, a strap to go over top of the battery and hold everything in. I wanted to build it out of alloy um, because I don't want to have any stainless in there if I can. I don't want bolts or straps or anything like that because basically stainless and alloy love to interact with each other. So I'm keeping this boat 100% alloy or plastic if I can. Um, and anything that's sort of joined is going to be joined with like a sicker type adhesive glue. So my plan with these little guys, I'll just clean the ends up, I'll just file them up. And then the six millimeter rod, I was just going to drill two holes, push it through from this side and then weld it on this side over here. Nice and simple, don't cut them off, leave them leave them long and then we can get a nice big weld all the way around. It's going to be pressure tight, it's also going to be nice and strong. Have to grind it off or do something. So all of the work this morning has been to get to a stage that we can start pressure testing this front so that we can chop out some of the welds that we know have got holes in them and then fill them back up. So now we'll go and get the air compressor fired up and we'll figure out how to get this thing airtight. So what we've done, inside where these holes are in the battery box, we've jammed rags, same on both sides. We've got an air gun, we've got the bung in this side, air gun in that side blowing air into them. Now we're just going to see where the leaks are coming out from. When we're pressure testing we use a positive air pressure on the inside of the tubes from the air compressor and regular dishwashing liquid and water and we squirt it over the wells like this. 
Wherever there's a leak, it'll show up as a whole bunch of bubbles. You can see just here a point to a whole bunch coming out of one of the seams. We've gone through as you saw, found a few areas, so pinholes in either corner up here, so we're going to just chop this whole thing out and we'll have another go at that. Couple of, yeah, couple of good ones just down in here, like an actual, you see there, there's an actual pinhole there and a pinhole there. Missed those when we're welding, obviously. So we'll go through and, um, yeah, but basically we've marked it up where we can see. We're going to go and do the what we can see now, and then um, we'll have another go at pressure testing it just after this. Go with this guy here. So we've got the the top side sort of uh, pressure tested up as happy as we're going to get I think. We're going to do the bottom. So we've gone round with a fine tooth comb. Um, we've both had a real good look at this and we can only actually find one hole um, on the underside. So we're, it's an incredibly easy hole to get to so we'll go out, grind that out now and we'll fill it up and that should just about be us. taken all day but the dinghy is watertight so we've gone through um, there's no like silicon or sicker or anything like that in it. it's um, 100% aluminium welding um, yeah pretty stoked with that everything seems to be working all right what we'll do is go through now um, and once we'll clean up all of our welds and stuff we've got to flatten them up and things we'll do a final pressure check um, and then we'll get into doing the flotation foam it's probably gonna happen tomorrow though we've been working on the boat all weekend and then I came in and holy crap, look at that. Someone's clearly broken in and uh, stacked up all of uh, somebody else's dirty dishes because we'd never ever do that. Oh, it's a windy old day. So we've got uh, about to do our last pressure test. So Trev's setting up our inlet. We've blocked it up on the bung over this side. We've gone through, everything's marked and welded and all that sort of stuff. We should have basically no leaks. We're gonna lose some air pressure through some of these here so you can see we've just jammed some um, rags inside where the cables come out and it's really loud next to it so it's obviously leaking a bit of air through that. So this is our last pressure test so we've gone through and flapped a few of these welds back and we just want to make sure that we've not caused any drama by opening any of the welds up so we're just going through and doing a final check. Now there is a few leaks right down the very bottom but because we physically can't get the welder in there, we're going to be using an industrial sealant to seal up those pinholes. It's welded strong, we just need to make sure it doesn't leak. So we're doing the electrical cabling now, and this stuff that we're using for heat shrink, it only really goes with a flame, it's some um, pretty aggressive stuff. It's a 3 to 1 shrink ratio, but it's also resin infused. So, um, yeah, it's when it, when it goes on to the cable itself, basically the the black stuff will glue itself to the um, outside insulation of the cable. I only have black, ideally I'd do a red one on the red cable, but you know, tough, doesn't matter. No one's going to see these where they are and we know exactly what it is because you'll be looking at the red cable, not the black um, heat shrink. So heat shrink it right down like that. And then you should see right at the front here, you can see there's a little bit of glue coming out. There you go, you can see a little bit of glue coming out of the black resin seeping out and that basically glues it to the cable. So what we're doing, we've got a piece of uh, cutting board that we've chopped up and this is going to be our isolation plate and then we've got a positive and negative that go through a stainless bolt. So the stainless is isolated away, away from the aluminium but it also means that we can have it exposed at the other end on the outside end and not have to uh, worry about rust or anything like that. This is what they end up like, this is one I did, um, this is the other end of the cable that we're just doing and that allows us to connect on a terminal there 
and we just sicker the, the pad in. So the holes are seven and a half mil holes and the bolts are eight millimeter um, M8s. So um, they're, they're pretty tight, so we crank them in and that helps us get a more of an airtight um, setup. Rather than having to use like a sealant, we can just basically cut a thread using the bolt. So this is what we're left with. You've basically got your plastic isolation panel, you've got your two terminals, so you've got a positive and, neg and a negative. Um, in this case they're both red because we've got a red, what we had to make it red or black, and in this case we just chose red. And then on that side you've got your two uh, threads with a nut that can be, um, you know, pull a terminal off from there. What we're going to do is coat these here with our liquid electrical tape, and that'll, um, yeah, that'll really seal it up so that it's completely weather tight. So we're weather tight up to here, but we want to make sure that we absolutely douse it so there's just no way corrosion can be a pain on this end of it. So I've got to go and do some work. Um, but what we're going to do next is start putting the shelf in the very front of the dinghy and this is the Mishka stand. Um, it's also doubling as our waterproof uh, sort of compartment that we have at the front of the boat so we can stick all of our whatever's in it, whatever when we need to leave the boat and we can lock it up. So I'll show you what we're doing for that. In case you're wondering why it's so bloody noisy at the moment, right down the end of the yard in those big bays are sandblasting a trawler. So plenty of noise all day in the yard at the moment. Right, the plan for this shelf we're going to start halfway up the tube. This tube is currently sitting about level. We're going to start halfway up the tube and then we're going to bring it along level so it's going to actually drop down and be below halfway up the front here. And what that's going to allow us to do is essentially have a flat platform when the dinghy's sitting still. Um, when Mishka gets in it's going to tip forward and when somebody gets at the back to steer it it's going to tip up again. So what that will mean is whenever somebody's sitting in the boat this is always going to drain. It's not going to collect puddles at the front of the boat and all that sort of stuff. And it'll be level when the boat's just sitting here in the water. So we need to get some cardboard, make ourselves up a template for that and then once that's done we'll work out the shape that's going across the bottom of the dinghy here um, that's going to be the vertical piece. Over here I've got a piece of 2mm plate. Ideally I would have probably used a 4mm for that top step but we'll be able to do it anyway with, uh, with our 2. So what we're doing, we're just measuring up some 50 by 50 angle and we're welding it all the way in around the edge here and that's actually going to provide the rim of our, uh, our lip. So final instalment of dinghy build. I'll show you what we're working on today. So on the front end of the boat, we've got a shelf that we've put together. We're actually going to make an aluminium one rather than cardboard. We've got a template down here, and that does our vertical all the way around the front. My lovely assistant is going to put it in place. There we go. We're going to build a box at the front end of the boat to store all of our gear. We're going to get into the electronics, so we'll be fitting our battery terminals up into each battery box. We've already got the cabling installed down the back, so we'll be starting the wiring for the outboard. Um, Australia's had heaps of bushfires um, in the last sort of probably two weeks. Um, yesterday we drove back from Brisbane, we had to do a trip down the coast, five hours down the coast, and um, yeah, we were basically driving through the, all of the smoke and everything from a pretty big bushfire that's not far from here. So at the moment we've got clear skies because we're getting a sea breeze, but uh, I think in the next day or two it's supposed to spin around and we'll be blanketed in smoke again. So we're hoping to get all of this done before that happens. Lovely, that's nice. But then you've got a really you've got a nice edge, eh? Okay, I've got a break in the wind, so um, I'll give you a quick update as to where we're up to. We've got our front vertical welded in, so we've done welds on both sides. We've got 
all the way around we've got our um, angle iron that's welded in what we're going to do on this side we're going to put our hinging and then it's going to just be a lift up lid over here we have our template so this is what we're going to be cutting so that we can get our lid built from this So this is a piece of 50 millimeter pipe. It's the same as what's been welded into the boat. And we're gonna roll the back edge of this uh, top step onto this pipe. So essentially what we're gonna create is a, an overhanging lip and it's gonna give strength to that step and it's also gonna help us keep water out of this front box. So with the welding finished, it's time to start looking into the foam. So we're putting flotation inside these tubes. So if the dinghy ever does get punctured, for whatever reason, weld lets go, we smash into a rock, something like that. The internal flotation foam is gonna keep the boat buoyant. Even if it's fully submerged, it'll still stay there as sort of something to float and hold onto until uh, we can get a rescue boat to us. So the flotation foam that we're using is a closed cell expanding foam. So I'll show you what we're doing. This is the foam that we're using, it's a Sika product, um, high yield expanding foam, it's basically um, used in the construction industry inside uh, you know, gaps between walls, windows, that sort of stuff. Um, it's got a 42 to 1 expansion ratio, so 1 litre will make 42 litres of foam. So I thought I'd show you this, this is the foam that we've used, it's, it's a, basically it's a single pack but it's a closed cell expandable foam, so for every litre of um, liquid foam you end up with 42 litres of expanded foam. And this stuff is pretty sturdy, like, I mean you can give it a hiding and it doesn't really break apart. That said, if I snap it, I'll zoom right down and I'll show you the actual cell structure. So this is what it's like, you can sort of see the closed cellness basically relates to the surface. So I spoke to the manufacturer about this and they said it's a it's a completely closed cell foam and if you cut it, it'll be open cell just on the on the bubbles that have been cut. So it's the first one or two millimeters will be compromised but then the rest will still be closed cell. So provided that this doesn't actually get any sort of cuts and chops and stuff on the inside of the um, tubes once we've expanded the foam in there we should be good for a closed cell system for the lifetime of the dinghy. My plan is to do this in two parts so I'm going to foam the front half of the boat first and then we're going to have a go at doing the rear of each of the tubes. I don't need to fully fill each tube like 100% with foam I just need enough in there so that when this boat's completely underwater it's got enough flotation that it'll never sink. Because I want to reach right down into the bowels of the boat I need, that's the standard nozzle, it's not long enough. So I found some pipe over the road at the chandlery. Fits in the nozzle quite well. That's our flotation side sorted. Now we're going to start gluing in our electrical cabling. So we got the electrics in. So you can sort of see they're just sitting there glued, the top and bottom. So basically what the plan is now, we've just got them sort of sitting there, but um, yeah, they'll be sealed up and glued in the next sort of, I don't know, 12 hours, something like that. Um, and now we're able to essentially connect the batteries to those, and we know that we've got cabling right around the boat. So we'll get this lid finished and then yeah, we're ready to start hooking in batteries and putting a motor on it. So now that we've got the opening and closing front end of the boat sorted, we're going to start figuring out grip because this is where Mishka sits and um, clearly if we don't have anything on there, he's not going to sit there for long, he's going to be over the side. So 
So it's the morning of the sea trials. We've got a couple of jobs left to go. So Trev over the back here is working on a bung for the, the V at the back of the boat. Um, I'm going to be sorting out the batteries, getting those in, tied in and bolted up and so on. And then we'll get the outboard on and we should be pretty much ready to go. So we managed to get the this glued in, all this rubber's glued in. We've done a line of sealant all the way around all the various edges on the boat. This here works out quite lovely. Nice little compartment when we open up. And you can see we've got a curved back lid on the, there you go, you can sort of see the angle of it there. Basically that allows us to shut it and just need to do a bit more patching up with the glue. You can sort of see that there's a bit loose. A couple of spots over there is a little bit loose. But basically it means that you can't actually smack an edge on this um, on this part of the, the boat here. So it's a nice rounded, rounded spot to walk up so we don't have to take our shins out every time we get in and out of the boat. So now that we're just about ready to start doing this outboard, I'll show you what we're actually using. This is our outboard. So it's it's basically a short trolling motor. So the shaft is the length needed to be able to put it on the back of an outboard, um, on the back of a dinghy without it, um, you know, sticking well well down. The bracket is the same as what you'd see on a lot of trolling motors. I personally think these are a bit garbage, but they work, they're fine, they're cheap and all that. Um, these rust out, so I think these are stainless, but I'm pretty sure they're not stainless because they rust like you wouldn't believe. So eventually these get replaced, So, but for now we're just going to leave those as they are. This motor is a 92 pound thrust um, variant. Let me just spin that around, there we go. So you've got a few options, you basically got, you know, you know how much um, total power it's going to give you, you also know you've got high and low battery, so this is a DC 24 volt system, and this is an easy way of telling how much power you've got left in your battery. Eventually on this dinghy we're actually going to fit another monitor that tells us um, how much in terms of percentage we've got left in the battery so that we're never taking it down because I don't know if this low is 100% discharge or 50% and I never want to go below sort of 50% on these batteries. I'd like to actually stay even higher than that, um, sort of don't only take about 40% capacity out. Just means they're going to last longer because they're gel so they do degrade the further down you take it. Now on this end it's just got alligator clips so we're going to be cutting those off because on our bolts over here, we're going to fit essentially a battery terminal type setup, um, just like a you know a bolt-on terminal. So we're going to get a better connection. It also means we can douse it in liquid electrical tape and know that we're going to get a really good um, corrosion-free environment. One final thing needs a circuit breaker. So this is what we're using. It's basically a 60 amp waterproof circuit breaker. You can test it and reset it. Pretty straightforward. It's ignition protected, um, and it's yeah, it's fully resin encapsulated, um, stainless fittings, etc. So these are fairly decent. Um, so we're going to put one of those in there. So if we ever need to, you know, test the system, reset it, whatever, or if ever there's a short, we know we're going to be covered. So while Trev gets on with the bung in the back, I'm sorting out. A connection that goes from our, our waterproof breaker. I'm going to basically build this. It's a piece of uh, stainless flat 3mm by 50mm flat bar. I'm just going to cut it down to 25 by 3 and that's going to be essentially our link between the breaker and the negative terminal. I'm putting it on the negative because it's going to be exposed. What way is that? Yeah, it's working. That's in reverse. Right, forward. So there you can sort of see the little LEDs coming to the shadow a bit. You can see the LEDs lit up for the battery. So we're obviously charged up, ready to go. At the moment, we've just got a couple of alligator clips um, just holding it onto the terminals because we've run out of um, eight mil bolts. So yeah, we'll sort that out. And then also that stainless link between the positive and the um, the fuse. I'm gonna put liquid electrical tape all over that as well. So, so we just did the maths. We put 294 litres of foam in total into this boat. So um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna sink anytime soon. Fighting me. So Jess is doing the maiden voyage. Everything seems to work, so we're just gonna send her off into 30 knots and hope that it does. <laughs> Dame did this um, and he's finished it on my birthday, so <laughs> this is a surprise birthday present for me. Right, buckled in. Cool. Wow, it's awesome. It's actually really great getting in. Oh, wow, guys, it's amazing. 
Not yet. Not yet. Cause when you say thank you <laughs> to Trev <laughs> to Trev <laughs> yeah and to Rod yeah. and to you and Malcolm's ideas and yeah it was pretty cool the amount of input we had on it's it it's actually a real joint effort <laughs> yeah yeah it's a uh, it's surprising something so small can be such a challenge yeah it's six weeks yeah yeah, yeah. Um, amazing! I'm so glad we did it. I know. I know. It seems like it's a silly thing to do for some people, particularly people who have money. Wouldn't think twice about going and buying one. But you know, nine grand later, you yeah. know, a boat this strong, this stable. Yeah. It's it's made. It's spec so that I can get in and out with yeah. a disability. No um, smell. No noise. Yeah. Yeah. It can bang into something and dent, and it's not going to puncture yeah. that easily. It's filled with um, flotation yeah. uh, foam. It does seven knots in a high speed run. <laughs> Dame can't go too fast. And what's really neat is what I didn't expect is Mish to remember being in a tinny, you know, like really comfortable. It was fine. Yeah. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if he'd remember. So. You got a bit pissed at the um, spray. <laughs> well, yeah, fair enough. But no, gorgeous. So now we've got to find some more handles and put them on the sides at the back and then we'll, um, we'll stow it because we're not going to use it again until we're in the water. So we'll start probably up on the roof or something. Trev donated the black yeah, non slip. So that there's, um, that's all glued in now. Are they rub, um, plastic? Yeah, they're plastic. So there's no, there's no metal on this except for there's some stainless bolts down on the like the positive and negative down in the corners, but that's isolated from the aluminium. So everything else that's on here is an aluminium rivet or whatever it might be, so that there's nothing that's going to corrode. Yeah. We do need to change a couple of stainless rivets over there because we ran out of alloy. So we'll, we'll drill those out and swap them in a, like you know when we can okay. in the next few days. But um, yeah, basically there's nothing on here that will interact with each other. And the motor was great. I didn't expect so much power. Easy to use. It's just other than my forgetting left and right, which I do because I'm really dyslexic. But um, Really great, more power than I thought. I'm surprised by that and really pleased. I don't think we need two, darling. Well, you say that now. <laughs> this is not the speed one. <laughs> well, you say that now. I'd be interested to see how many people we can get in before it starts to go, you know, too low. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. 